Welcome to the Homeschool Mom Chat. I'm Teresa Wiedrich, the Certified Life Coach and Homeschool Mentor, found here at the Homeschool Life Coach account on Instagram. And normally at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every Tuesday, I'm having a conversation with a homeschool parent who is able to support and encourage other homeschool parents. And that is why I'm here. That is actually what I do. I work to help homeschool moms or women really around the world shed what's not working so they can show up in their homeschool and their mom lives authentically, confidently, and purposefully. But today I was going to share with you a conversation between Sarah McKenzie and I, and I realized that I booked a Zoom chat. And so I've uploaded our conversation that we had just today right here same shirt and you can find it over on youtube or i'm going to attach the youtube video to this conversation but i thought i would introduce you to sarah's book because barbara and i'm going to tell you that this book because barbara barbara cooney paints her world it is both obviously a beautiful book and i am so privileged to get copies of Sarah McKenzie's books, but also the conversation that her and I had was very much built around homeschool moms' creativity and nourishing our creativity, giving us space to develop our creativity, to do things for just the pure enjoyment. We enjoy doing something, me, writing, obviously, also Sarah McKenzie's um, interest is writing, and that's something that she's done for a long time. Her and I actually have a conversation about some of our childhood ideas, what we thought we might be doing. You know, she was listening to a local radio news and, uh, or maybe not even news, a traffic and weather um, radio host and how she thought that would be a really cool thing to do as a child. And I know that I really admired Barbara Walters, that's dating me, but she is someone that was interviewing everyone and she absolutely reflects what I love to do now, both within my coaching and also in podcasting, is really to dig under the layers of maybe the common conversation points that people have in the homeschool community. I really like to go deeper and get to the, the most meaningful elements of our homeschool mom journey. And so both her and I had these childhood ideas of what we would be doing when we were grown up or listening back or looking back to our own childhood stories saying, oh, this is interesting that you enjoyed putting together, um, this was me, putting together radio shows on a tape recorder with a tape cassette and creating little segments. And now that's what I'm doing when I'm podcasting is with different technology, creating these podcast um, uh, episodes, which by the way, one of them came out today and it's all about diving into books, helpful books. And that's why in stories, you'll see offerings of different reading lists for personal growth, for homeschooling, for um, building stronger relationships. I've got book lists galore. And as I was chatting with Sarah, her and I both decided that she probably has a bigger homeschool book library, of course, because now she's not just writing books, but she's publishing them and distributing them. But we were both talking about various books. And one of the ones that we really loved, clearly she has a fascination with Barbara Cooney, um, is, uh, let's see, Miss Rumphius. We're talking about the book Miss Rumphius and the lupins that, she, you know, were pretty much strewn through all of the illustrations in that book. So there's lupins everywhere. And right now there are lupins everywhere around my mountain homestead. I'm not living very far away from Sarah McKenzie. So that's about maybe three, three and a half hours away. And so we live in similar topography and both of us, loads of lupins in our backyard. These illustrations in this book, I mean, it is just gorgeous. So hats off to Eileen Ryan Ewan gorgeous gorgeous storybooks because barbara but i don't know if you have uh you have these um other options or other uh offerings that barbara cooney has in her selections um or in in her um library that she's created but she wrote island boy that's one that i have there's another one called hattie and the wild waves i haven't read the oxcart man i know that it's very popular but um a beautiful, really a beautiful story. I'm curious if you've already read it. If you would let me know in the comments below if you have already seen her book, Because Barbara. 
I think what I like the most about this book, it resonated with me because it feels like Barbara Cooney is a homeschool mom. And I don't think she was, but just listen for a little bit. I can do like a read aloud for homeschool moms. And I know that you might be in the place of thinking, read aloud for me, I'm doing it all the time for other kids. Well, now that I have graduated that homeschool experience, I know reading aloud to my kids is so exciting. When Sarah and I were chatting, she was saying that she is still in her homeschool. She still enjoys doing things like reading, uh, read alouds, and I do too. And I said, the only one that's like still in my homeschool is my dog, Violet, my great peer. And uh, sometimes she sits long enough for a book. But this beautiful book, because Barbara, I'm gonna read a little bit to you, just like a read aloud for homeschool moms, and tell me if you identify some of the themes in this book as a homeschool mom. When she was a wisp of a girl, Barbara Cooney spent her summers in Maine. Among colorful sprays of wildflowers, sparkling waves of the ocean, and salty sea air, Barbara noticed everything. At home in New York, she watched her mother paint. You try, Barbara, her mother urged. And because Barbara did whatever she set her mind to, she painted. But alone in her room, the colorful sprays of wildflowers and sparkling waves of the ocean didn't show up on the page, not yet. Oh, to paint like mama, thought Barbara. Each day, Barbara got up and washed her face and ate breakfast with her brothers. She went to school and came home and did her homework pretty soon. She was all grown up. Barbara still loved to paint, so she decided to become an illustrator. And because Barbara did whatever she set her mind to, she began illustrating books for children. The publishers, however, wouldn't let her use color. It's too expensive to print, Barbara. They told her, we don't know if anyone will buy your books yet. You'll have to prove yourself first. But my heart and soul are in color, thought Barbara. Still, she kept making her black and white line drawings. Soon, Barbara had children of her own. Barbara's heart and home grew. She settled with her family in the town of Pepperell, Massachusetts, where her husband was the town doctor. No, that's not the only reason I identify with this book. One autumn day, as Barbara gathered witch hazel in the woods, she passed a little barn. The sun, low in the sky, shone through the doorway, setting a golden stage for a flock of chickens. White, gold, black, rust-colored chickens, speckled and lace chickens, chickens with crests on their heads, with feathered legs and iridescent tails. I would like to draw those chickens, thought Barbara. And don't we homeschool moms all aspire to have chickens? No, not everybody, I know. Later, Barbara found those same chickens in the stories she read of knights and castles. She decided to illustrate them. And because Barbara did whatever she set her mind to, and that is a point that I recognize as a homeschool mom seems to be a common theme. Whatever we set our mind to, we do. Therefore, every detail in the art represented what had really grown in the time of knights and castles. The time, this time the beauty Barbara held inside her did show up on the page. This time her publisher agreed to print her art in color. After the book was published, she was bestowed the highest award for an American illustrator, the Randolph Caldecott Medal. Back in Pepperell, Barbara set her drawing table in the center of the busiest room in her house. Only a homeschool mom would set her creative activity in the middle of the room. Don't you agree? I know I did. I learned to write while my four kids were in the room. While visiting the family vacation house in Maine, she tucked watercress sandwiches into a wicker hamper and gathered her children for picket picnics. I know I do that, or I did that all the time. She taught them to see what she saw to love what she loved, to take in the delicious wide world. To truly capture the world's beauty on her page, she decided she needed to see the world up close. 
And because Barbara did whatever she put her mind to, she climbed Mount Olympus to see how things looked from Zeus's point of view. She slept in Sleeping Beauty's castle. She spent a week in the Appalachian Mountains to watch the sun set in the valley. After her children were all grown up, Barbara's heart called her back to the salty sea. She moved to Maine and began to work on the next book while a new house was built around her. Alongside the pounding of hammers and the screaming of saws, Barbara made her illustrations, best illustrations yet. She won her second Caldecott medal. Now the very place she loved most became her palette. From her paintbrush flew gulls, terns, cormorants, spruce-covered islands, healing sailboats, and mists of fog. The colorful sprays of lupins, the sparkling waves of the ocean, and the salty sea air, it all arrived on her page just as it had lived in her heart. Barbara grew old. On a visit to the library in her little town by the sea, she noticed dingy paint, a leaky roof, two cramped shelves, cramped spaces. This is not a proper home for books, thought Barbara. No, a library should be a kind of paradise. When she closed her eyes, the library transformed her in her mind. Barbara determined that something must be done. And because Barbara did whatever she set her mind to, she wrote to her illustrator friends and requested that they send artwork for an auction. 75 artists contributed, contributed their work. A howling success, said Barbara. Her little town by the edge of the sea would get a new library. To celebrate Barbara through a splendid summer party, dark settled, sparklers burned and the night sky twinkled with the low lying stars. Barbara Cooney set out to make the world more beautiful and because Barbara did whatever she set her mind to. That's what she did. This book was written by Sarah McKenzie, illustrated by Eileen Ryan Ewan. It is a beautiful book. And this story reminds me of every homeschool mom, not just because you're creative and you do interesting things with your children and you spend loads of time with them. You determine to create or include curiosities and creativities in your real homeschool life, despite the busyness all around you. But also you determine to do whatever you're going to do and you do it. So this book is dedicated to you. And thank you for Sarah, or thank you to Sarah McKenzie for allowing me to read this live. Highly recommend checking it out. It's available everywhere. And if you want to watch the just, just uh, recorded interview between Sarah and I, if you happen to be a business building homeschool mom, you'll find it especially relevant and encouraging to hear about our business journeys, then you're welcome to join me over on YouTube to watch the rest of our conversation. I hope you have a beautiful day.